Hello, this is Dr. Ted with Dr. Ted Talks, coming to you from the Crystal Star Ranch. We're continuing on our journey through the book, We, and today we begin with one of my favorite sections on pets. I don't know if you're a pet lover, but I am. We have four dogs and one kitty kitty, and they help light up our lives. So this section I will probably share with more enthusiasm than some. I start with a poem about my grand pup, Judd. My son Shandon and his wife Bailey own this great little dog and I love his energy and I wrote this poem for him, for them, and now for you. It's called Walk in the Park. Tugging on the leash, release tail wagging, doggy smiling, suddenly white fur flashing against green grass. Rabbit, white fur bouncing at high speed, long strong legs overtake shorter legs, rabbit darting, white fur closing, nose down, powder puff, yippee, closing, drooling, white fur flashing against green grass, saliva dripping from the run and the exhilaration, rabbit through a small hole in the fence, Screeching halt, bundle of bark on back feet, watching, crying, watching, barking, dancing. Interruption. Fox ears up, head turns quickly to the right. Squirrel. Squirrel between trees. Stupid squirrel. Game on. White fur flashing against green grass. Pets are a glue that holds a family together. Dogs teach us how to live and love right up to the last second. A dog can ask the most profound question with the tip of his head. If it is not beautiful or useful, it must go. Uh, except for the cat, of course. <laughs> uh, one, does not under, one who does not understand the loss of a pet has never been in love with a pet. The loss of a pet brings resounding silence to our homes and to our hearts. The kindness, love, and devotion of animals tends me to, to cause me to see them higher than man on the intelligence scale. The map to a man's character can usually be observed in how he treats his dog. Trying to replace a loved pet is like trying to replace a loved sister. Love expands our hearts. Loving pet expands the expansion. We don't need to pretend to love a pet. Isn't that refreshing? May I learn to sit and listen and love like a good dog. A kitten playing with a toy is the spirit of the room fully materialized. Oh, to live like a cat. They never pretend things are okay when they're not. Cats, about drama, greed, control, power, attitude. Dogs, a love story. Our favorite pets live in a parallel tangential reality when we take a brief moment to join them, everything around us changes for the better. Dogs are so gracious that they will make a fool of themselves just so you will not feel all alone. I became a cat dog man that we might in our home live in harmony together. Love and cats, you can't tame either. The silence of the kitten gently traversing the leaves on the forest's floor was only equaled by the pirouetting leaf circling above about the land on the kitten's nose. Cats Rule, Dogs Rule, and Man's a Fool by Thomas Cat. Cats speak human better than any other animal. Owners of smart dogs may disagree. 
I took a short break, and my kitty held me for a little while. I'm good to write a few more lines now. As the cat walks through the door, they pause with their tail just inside so that we must hold the door a little longer. And now, one of my favorite sections, poetry. My favorite poetry lives in an aspen forest atop the tallest tree on Colorado's western slope. Poetry shines a beacon on the painful truths that hide in deep, shadowy canyons of the human experience. The images are at times lovely, and there are other times. We are the inhabitants of Earth and are hollow flutes through whom the universe flows the gentle, peaceful music of truth love, joy, kindness, appreciation, and acceptance that we may all dance in harmony with the world. As the brush strokes rise from the artist, the words from, rise from the inspiration of the poet, both of which lend themselves to the interpretation of mankind. My poetry writes itself I am in the wings, joyfully lifting it up. Poetry reintroduces me to my higher self, both when I read it and when I write it. These chapters are my children. Please be kind to them. Diamonds are where the earth captured the sunlight's tiny rays to fascinate and delight the eye of all. The soft rays of the setting sun on the distant mountain range with all of its yellowish, bluish, goldenish, pinkish pastelities and rainbow-flavored peace roses, gifts of Mother Nature. Inspiration is to poetry what light is to a Thomas Kincaid painting. Waxing poetic need not be difficult, just Miyagi it. Wax on, wax off. Poets seek the essence of thought. The best poets write from it. Poetry is not the truth. What you think about poetry is not the truth but what it makes you feel is the truth. As words flow from the poem, meaning is formulated in the mind of the reader. In the master's hands, the value of the instrument sings its song. As I paint myself into the night sky, the moon seems much closer and I feel the coolness of the violet blue black on my shoulders and the twinkle of the stars on my eyelashes. Nothing creates poets like love. The gentle welcoming coo of the morning dove, the succulent waft of fresh cut alfalfa, the tiny glittering rainbows captured in the snow globe droplets on the flower's leaf, all reminders of nature's magnificence. A poem without meaning is a life without a heartbeat. Poetry is a rest stop on life's highway. Poetry, feelings cleverly disguised as words. I am that I am. I am to live each moment of my life in such a way, to such a degree, and at such a pace that throughout my life I can look back over it all and know the compelling joy of the satisfaction that only comes from completion, 
of living a value-driven, full-out life. I am that I am. Poetry is word architecture aware of the past, but aimed at eternity. In the forest on a very early Sunday morning, only the light moves. Walk with me among the clouds, holding my hand, and you will not need a parachute. Floating. We are each a meaningful speck on the beach of history, connected in conscious living like the sea to all other beaches that ever were or will ever be. We are stewards of time, choices, and outcomes. Poetry is the microscope, bringing comforting focus to a disheveled world. Poetry, the words are not clearly or nearly as important as the feelings they evoke. With fleeting rapture, nature designs such wine as a lady's alluring fragrance on man's mind. I am but one key in the piano of your life, and yet every symphony begins with one key. If there be but one special note as you traverse the compositions of your life, let it be me, a simple tone, a pure, simple echo of our history. Poetry be the cliff's notes of truth. Each new poem is a launch site for a rocket and a safe landing spot for a wounded heart. Your sudden quiver seems connected to your breathy sigh with a silver thread emanating from my soul. Burning love is the sustained fire released from the log of eternal commitment. Unconditional love connects the white sand beaches of our souls as the oceans connect the continents. At the foundation of it all, beneath the moving waters, amidst the stones worn smooth by pressure and the passage of time, we are one in a river of the human spirit the field of infinite possibilities and unconditional love runs through it, connecting and unifying us all, making humankind the largest contiguous organism in the world. This is the secret to creating a world that works. Words are to poets what colors are to artists with which they both paint a portrait of life. Only poets get close to describing how much the heart can hold, except for new lovers. Every sunset, every mountain view, every crashing wave and rainstorm are better when you're in it with me. Your pretty face smiles back from my first cup of fresh coffee, and your fragrance wafts over me, reminding me there is nourishment more refreshing than sleep. It has been said the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. My journey with you begins with forever and ends with the point never, and I don't really care about the distance. Poets, songwriters, be conscious. Let life in and illustrate it in your own words with your own melody. The second objective of the poet is to express the pain. The first objective is to feel the pain. Like the sky and the sea, it is oftentimes difficult to distinguish you from me. Good poetry stirs the imagination and the senses, 
simultaneously. From the ashes I rise like the phoenix, unscathed. Your smile warms the heart as the dew finds the morning grass. I move gracefully through timeless, painful struggles, suspended motionless in space like a soaring eagle uplifted on the mountain wind, and the stars are my friends, and they know my name. Peace of mind washes over us, through us, and then frequently flows on beyond us, showing others the path to harmony. Peace, joy, and love are lightning bugs in our consciousness. Where is that bell jar with holes in the lid when I need it? I wonder if Father Time feels like I did when I was gigging frogs as a child. I lost my patience, then found it on a meandering mountain trail under a towering ponderosa pine next to a sparkling little Colorado river. It had been revitalized. To open our soul to a compliment we open like a rose in the sun. We close our soul to criticism like a rose at day's end. Death in selfish greed trickles in to offer substantive relief from the pain. I suffer with passionate symphonic extremes without missing any of the notes in between. Each evening that drop of golden molten fire gently lowers itself silently into the horizon's sea without so much as a faint of steam. The morning star and the evening star, the universe's bookends holding us all together. Setting sail is much safer when you are fixed on the shepherd's star. As the water moves around the stones in its journey to the sea, our love flows around distractions, but continues to move forward. I am thankful for flow. Haste spoils the wonder like fear spoils the thunder. Let me be the visionary that sees the undiscovered, the sensitive that feels the non-physical, and the commitment that achieves the impossible. All of this is spoken in silence that you may feel the authenticity of my soul and that the earth may bask peacefully in the warmth of our presence. And now the poem, The River. Words are like a mountain river that sometimes flows endlessly to the sea and at other times just lies dormant as if waiting for another mountain shower. At their depth, words have power to educate, motivate, and inspire. On the surface, they make us laugh and sing and dance as if in the reflection of the sun. Words can be barbed like a fish hook and snag us and drag us along or hold us back in the fast flowing turbulent current of life. They can be a tempting lure that invites us to chase after it, never quite catching up. Or knowing the imagined satisfaction of the feast like the river, words carve deep channel, causing change that can be magnified with time, creating vast canyons in the mind as the waters of the river can be hot in some areas and cold in others. Words likewise can demonstrate the heat of passion and embrace or the coldness of indifference and apathy. Like rivers over time, 
rounds off the rough stones, words too wear us down to our core, causing us to know the truth even though it is at times relentless. The river naturally carries twigs and leaves down streams as word, words inherently carry thoughts and ideas from one person, community, or country to another. As fish and other creatures live in the river, people live in the words, gathering strength and nourishment and sometimes experiencing disappointment and danger therein. The river runs clear, murky, and cloudy. Words are understood, not understood, and misunderstood. Just as the river is still and peaceful in some places and racing rapidly in others, there are silent, peaceful spaces amidst the unending play on the sandbars at the edge of the river, not unlike adults playing on the edges of words as they serve as both the source and the antisource of passion and relationships. At times we float through conversations as we would float the river on a canoe, being more aware of how we feel than we are of our surroundings as we drift by. The shore is made up of countless alternating particles of the river and of the shore. As the river rises and falls on its journey, we rise, we ride the incessant roller coaster of life, built on words. The river can be treacherous and dangerous just as does our languaging. The process is natural, erosive, creative, destructive, and unending, and it flows and flows and flows, and so it flows. A poem on poetry. Poetry need not be created, but rather retrieved providently from the ethers of the inner workings of the physical universe, having been written before all time for each scribe to discover unattended. Rather than writers, poets are transcribers, chroniclers, Dire is the odians of the verisimilude of truth so sublime, so mysterious that we question its reality as it invites us to taste its splendid, puissant flavor of the human spirit. The meaning of the verse is not ours to asseverate, but it is rather ours to share, to impart, to Relay that each reader may succinctly and privately partake and make his or hers own determination of its applicability, verity, meaning, or import, not with the mind, but rather from within the soul, more feeling than thought, that explication not defined by time or space, but by living deliberately, mindfully, and intentionally in the dimension of repeatedly being interpreted anew based on the reader's current, fervent, unrestrained empyrean, soulfully juxtapositioned amongst the stars, the unremitting now of all times. And now, a raindrop captured in thought. For a brief moment we stand in our glory suspended motionless above the earth as a mysterious angel hair brushed cloud revealing rapturously in our own sumptuous splendor like a raindrop basking alone on a rounded river stone struck unexpectedly by a silent bolt of gentle pastel sunbeam from the soft light of the canyon's setting sun. And then, as the magic moment magnificently materialized, the instant quickly passes. And our heart is warmed, our mind inspired, and our soul refreshed by the moment's 
cloistered radiant reflective beam. Life's blessing. Serendipi serendipitously as we sleep, born unconscious from the day's toil, pain, suffering, and blame, which cannot be recalled by the stringent juice of life, exudes our mind and memory to cascade down drop by drop onto our unconsciousness until, despite our impaled non-resistance and against our fevered, fervent will, as we waken from exhaustion of the night, enlightenment creeps up as if on cat's tiny, silent, velvety feet into our soul as an unwelcomed, unsought, unrequested, stringent, assiduous gift of life. Privilege. Oh, to be privileged, to be the poet who seldom left his writing desk, but who was frequently, warmly, and genuinely invited into the depths of the reader's inquisitive soul. The Man in the Moon. Is that a leer we doth perceive through yonder wintry, shimmering tree? The vast contrast of light and dark, I sit alone in this cold park. Your muse of now's ridiculousness as you peer down on this frivolous mess, your twisted rumination clear to see your gaze down on humanity, what we have done to humankind is understood by troubled mind. Ethereal though it may well be as it peers down through naked tree to see firsthand how we may be perceived as trite humanity. A bright reminder, dispersion made, the price that troubled mankind paid to be here now on spinning earth looking out in vain for valued worth in hopes we search through endless trod some waning kin with loving nod o diamond of the darkest night rain down us rain down upon us with thy light that we may know throughout our search that you abide us from your perch that we may soon a purpose find through our minute minuscule mind guide us with your light above to find somewhere's unending love well we'll leave you with that it's time to go feed and water the horses thanks for being with us today we enjoyed one of my favorite sessions together and we'll be moving along. We hope that life is good and that all is well with you as you move through your day. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Ted saying thanks so much for spending time with us. Enjoy us again for our next session. <music>